All right, everyone, it's time for Occult Literature, video number 159, The Family Nurse. Uh, it's, it's the Frugal Housewife's Companion. Interesting work, over 160 pages, so it's, it's fairly full length, especially for the period, the 1830s. So this is a fairly, fairly old work, generally speaking. A lot of the ones I edit are from roughly the 1860s, the 1910s. It's sort of the, the sweet spot for occult academia. This is more of a hands-on herbal guide. Link in the description to my edition of this work on Amazon. Second and third links are to my books, blogs, uh, many other herbal works, if that's what you're into. It's also a bit of folk, like remedies, folk uh, lore, actually. It's not just about the herbal side. This contains multiple sections. One of them is literally on making ointments and salves, things like that, like actually preparing them. Uh, so, again, very how-to, very hands-on. It's got an herbal guide, uh, literally speaking about sort of the medicinal properties that were, that were then used <laughs> in the middle of the uh, 19th century, at least, uh, for various ailments. Actually gives a piece of advice fairly early on, which is hilarious, where it's like, oh, yeah, the safest place in your house is away from windows and the chimney during a lightning storm. <laughs> it's like, you know, back then this was considered like, like uh, uh, interesting lore. Now it's like, well, yeah, you stay away from the window during a, a thunderstorm. It's a good idea. It's actually very funny. Uh, and there are other things in it as well. It speaks of poisons, both mineral and external. Um, it speaks of very, it, it talks a lot about laudanum for obvious reasons. And it's actually funny because for the most part, it talks about alcohol. It's like, don't use alcohol. Uh, don't add it to this, you know, you're giving it to your kids, they can acquire a taste for it to be bad. But then it says, oh yeah, if the patient's in discomfort, you can add a little gin to it, and it's okay. It's like, how much is a little? Like two shots, three shots? Probably five shots back then, you know, the measurement system is being a di bit different. They do have the full apothecary and measurement system as well uh, within this work. So it's very good, uh, it's very in-depth. It's also fairly easy to understand. Some of these works from the period... They get into a lot of weird, uh, sort of out there terminology, some archaic words and terms that you might not understand. This one, I think, was more for the lower class audience because it doesn't really do that. And it also, it prompts the individual. This is basically for, and this is what it's marketed to at least, for the woman of the household, and you know, she's got you know, probably five kids. It's like, here's basically a lot of it's on childcare. It's on childhood illnesses. Um, you, know, you know, here's how you apply the flannel to the throat, and you use this for their whooping cough and stuff, and the croup, it's very dangerous, uh, and, and interesting things like that. It talks about certain, like scurvy <laughs> and things. We would now use uh, different, the, the chill banes. Uh, here's how you uh, deal with your gout. Here's how you deal with the rickets. Now, uh, it's very, very funny altogether, uh, but again, very straightforward. It's in plain English, and actually that means it didn't require as much uh, effort to clean up as some documents from the era. The ones that were for the more high-class audience, oddly enough, use more of the thee and thou, thou art sort of language. These ones were more in what we typically would call semi-modern English, actually. It's very interesting. By the way, British English actually evolved. American English is more like it was hundreds of years ago actually more similar in many linguistic ways. A lot of people think that it's the other way around. They go, oh, the Americans diverged and, and their English degenerated. Actually, the, the more semi-formal types of English you find in New England and places like that, more similar to how, if you went back 300 years to, to Great Britain, people would talk more like I'm talking right now than many of the people that are in Great Britain right now. Very interesting thing to think about. But an excellent herbal work. This is right up there with the Canadian herbal as far as its sort of, its sort of length its scope, ease of understanding. Uh, I can't legally recommend you use any of the remedies in it or anything, but it is a receipt book. Uh, and keep in mind, in the 1800s, receipt doesn't mean the same as it means now. Usually it meant an apothecarian's receipt. Literally, here's how you make this poultice. Here's how you make this ointment. Here's a, a receipt, a list of ingredients to get, to purchase, or that you've gotten from the apothecary, uh, or you've had them mix it up. Uh, and also uh, culinary material. There is a culinary section here, food for invalids. You know, here's how to make oatmeal and barley water and, and some of these other interesting things. Also, sugar was considered medicinal back then. West India molasses appears dozens of times in this uh, because back then it was not widely available and used. It was actually originally a medicinal substance developed in Arabia. Originally on, on in sort of Persian Arabia and, and India as well, to a lesser extent, semi-refined. Uh, refined sugar as we use it today in, in the form of molasses or cane sugar and so forth was developed in the Middle East. It was actually considered medicinal. 
because they didn't ever have anything like that. They're like, oh my goodness, so sweet. Probably, <laughs> I'm going to say this, based on some of the alchemical lore from the period, they probably thought it had similar qualities to lead, which they thought was actually useful within an alchemical context to make none other than the elixir of life. Uh, it's very, very funny. Uh, read Hollandis, a uh, work of Saturn, if you want some interesting lore on that. So again, link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Second and third links are to my books, blogs. That's about all. Peace out.